thundering down the center of the turf. Carson Steinman is fifth. They're coming down to the finish. Lester Pickett flailing away at Royal Academy. It's all Greek to me toward the inside. Here's the wire. Head bobbing finish. Royal Academy does it. And the living legend out of retirement, 54-year-old Lester Pickett pulls off the upset here. Bizarre, unique, brilliant at his job. The words of 17-time classic winning rider Willie Carson describing his most complex, talented, challenged and challenging rival, Lester Keith Pickett. Only recently released from prison, back riding only a couple of weeks and winning at the Breeders' Cup. Pickett's talents in the saddle and his weaknesses out of it would propel him from the back pages to the front with a metronomic ebb and flow. Unusually tall for a flat jockey, he would become known as the Longfellow. With a jumping background, it soon became apparent at an early stage that young Lester was a gifted rider. Pickett the boy regarded school with disdain, cricket and football aside, and with him already demonstrating speech and hearing impediments, the call of the horses would always be his destiny. He was to have his first ride at just 12. He became champion apprentice just two years later, securing 52 winners in just his third season. The following year, with Piggott's Boy Wonder nickname now in common use, came the first of his derby rides. He was to make the race his own with an extraordinary nine wins, the first of which came at the age of just 18 aboard the Joseph Lawson drained Never Say Die in 1954. This was the start of a key year for Leicester, who linked up with the great trainer Sir Noel Merlis, and in a four-year golden period, they won the Derby with Crippello in 1957 and St Paddy in 1960. However, in 1966, Piggott shocked the racing world by announcing that he was now a freelance jockey. This move allowed an alliance to be formed with another legendary trainer, Vincent O'Brien. We put him in front this time, so you, you'll go back. A bit further on that same gallop. But these two will be working mostly behind him. Their partnership lasted well over a decade, including four Derby victories, and has gone down as one of the greatest racing unions of all time. Sir Ivor gave Piggott and O'Brien the first of their four Derby winners together. Three more followed with great names such as Roberto, the minstrel, and the greatest of them all, Nijinsky. An easy 2,000 guineas win was followed by an imperious Derby victory setting Nijinsky for a golden summer. The Irish Derby soon followed, and then the clash of the generations in the King George VI and Queen Elizabeth Stakes Marvel again at Nijinsky seeing off rivals, which included two derby winners, a Coronation Cup and a French Oaks winner. So now for Doncaster. A bout of ringworm presented a headache in his preparation for the St. Ledger, but Nijinsky shrugged that off and completed the Triple Crown with ease. 150 yards to go, and this great horse striding home, Nijinsky, from Meadowville, who challenging strongly on this side, from Vitigo on the far side, at the post, it's Nijinsky the winner. Leicester's ninth and final derby winner was Tinoso in 1983. He was booked for the ride by Jeff Ragg, backers of the 92 favourite barely had a moment's worry. Piggott's well-known single-minded determination to always get on the right horse with little regard for what or who got in the way saw him secure the ride aboard the Luca Kumani trained Comanche Run in the 1984 St. Ledger. A furlong to go, Comanche Run and Baynoon, Comanche Run and Baynoon, Comanche Run from Baynoon and Crazy, but inside the final furlong and it's left a minute going on, it's one for the record, the 28th classic, that's Comanche Run, wins the ledger from Baynoon, second out for Baynoon third. The pair took the world's oldest classic, giving Leicester his record 28th British classic, overhauling Fred Buckles' 27 wins set in the 18th century. An amazing achievement. In January 1985, Sir Peter O'Sullivan, the great commentator, journalist and friend of Leicester for many years, broke the story in the Daily Express newspaper. This was to be Piggott's final year in the saddle. However, he was soon to feel the full weight of Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs, who had spent many months building a case against Piggott. 
Piggott's arrest was followed by an appearance at Ipswich Crown Court on the 23rd of October 1987, where he pleaded guilty to 10 charges of tax evasion and was sentenced to three years in prison. The darkest day for Piggott, as horse racing's most recognized figure was incarcerated. Piggott served a year and a day of his sentence, released to the glare of the media in October 1988, and so it seemed that the career and public life of Lester Keith Piggott was at an ignominious end. But this was Lester, the rule book seemingly not written for him, and from seemingly nowhere, Piggott's name was back on the race card. Vincent O'Brien had been a significant psychological ally to his former stable jockey during the dark days, promising support if he ever wanted to make a comeback. True to his word, that support was crystallised on the world stage. John Reed was O'Brien's go-to rider at the time, but his fall before the Prix de l'Abbé a month earlier left Reed on the sidelines as the Breeders' Cup approached. O'Brien needed a jockey for the hugely talented Royal Academy, a top-class sprinter who was attempting to stretch out to a mile in New York. Aged 54, Piggott was his man. It's been a terrific year for the Grey Hairs. Uh, Nolan Ryan at 43 continues to overpower with his strikeout speed, and George Foreman continues to box after 40 and box pretty well. Hale Irwin, how about him in the U.S. Open? And comebacks, too, by Joe Ferguson in the NFL and Guy Lafleur in hockey. And in racing, 54-year-old Lester Piggott, England's all-time rider. He's the British Bill Shoemaker. He's taken a circuitous path to today's Breeders' Cup. And number one is Royal Academy. Royal Academy is American bred but European raced. A three-year-old who gives the great Lester Piggott his second Breeders' Cup mount. This colt has raced mostly in sprints, as far as a mile, only once in his career. What followed was one of the most unlikely, mesmerizing two minutes of racing history, as Lester executed what he described himself as the most satisfying winner I ever rode. On the outside, Mark of Distinction has clear running now, and here comes Mark of Distinction with his run for the lead. Lady Winner is in behind a phalanx of horses with nowhere to go. Royal Academy and Lester Pickett are six lengths off the lead, but they're launching their rally now as they come down to the final furlong. It's all Greek to me as a short lead, expensive decision, battling back, Mark of Distinction. Royal Academy is thundering down the center of the turf course, and Steinlin is fifth. They're coming down to the finish. Lester Pickett flailing away. retirement 54 year old Lester Piggott pulls off the upset here English champion jockey Lester Piggott 11 times a champion what a comeback here for Lester Piggott today we expected you to go to the lead early on but you sat back can you tell us what happened out there in the race well, I had a good race, really, you know. Uh, I, was, I was a little slow away. Uh, you know, just a bit... It was a bit scared of the gates, you know, going on the inside there. It was just a bit slow. But after that, you know, I had a nice one all the way through, you know. And uh, he just he just looked at something when he straightened out, you know. Otherwise, he would have won a bit further. Where do you think he'd win it? Well, not until, not until the furlong from happened, you know. Yeah. But he just hesitated when we straightened out, you know. That's an old one. He just ducked in a bit to the left, but, uh, you know, he wasn't comfortable, really. I just had to ride in the last 100 yards. Thank you very much. Storybook ending there. What a great ride, Lester Piggott. For pure drama, that win at Belmont Park surely topped the lot, but Piggott wasn't finished there. There was a final classic to come back at Newmarket in 1992 as Rodrigo de Triano powered to victory in the 2000 Guineas. This was his 30th and final British Classic. That year ended badly for Leicester as he had a crashing fall aboard sprinter Mr Brooks at Gulfstream Park's Breeders' Cup. He had a final winner in Britain in October 1994, making a career tally of 4,493 all told. And what a story it was, the Leicester Piggott tale, a human dichotomy, a man who lived life privately unable and unwilling to show his hand, but capable of consistent brilliance. Adored by the racing public, a thorn in the side of authority, present-day riders still chase and cherish the annual awards named after him. Willie Carson was right, bizarre, unique, brilliant. Lester Piggott, 
a legendary figure in the sport of horse racing, then, now, and forever. <laughs>